in this video we are going to discuss about stp convergence so how the stp convergence comes in place after the three steps followed in the spanning tree protocol so remember that spanning tree works by selecting a root bridge on the lan so it is selected by comparing bridge id of the each switch and stp is be considered to be converged after three steps have taken place the what are the three steps here as i said the three steps are electing a root bridge electing root ports and electing designated ports here so each of the above three steps are discussed in detail and also the network shown will be used to explain the stp convergence process very clearly here if you see here that electing a root bridge is the first step here so the electing root bridge here happens the bridge with the lowest bridge id which is bid becomes the root bridge here so how this bid is chose so the bid consists of two values in an 8 byte field that means in an 8 byte field so it consists of two values the bridge priority which is default 32768 and makes up to 2 bytes and the mac address of the backplane or supervisor model here so that also depending upon the model of the switch makes up the rest, rest of the 6 bytes so here the bid has 8 bytes field so the first 2 bytes will be of the bridge id or bridge priority which is 32768 and the rest is of the mac address which is the rest 6 bytes here so coming about the diagram if you see switch a switch b switch c and switch d here so you see the mac addresses are given for each switch and they have two interfaces one is coming with like 15 20 17 20 20 15 and here 18 and 15 here so stp convergence the first step is electing the root port so you you see here that all ports on the root bridge are set as designated so that they will be they will be forwarding in the forwarding state here that means whenever they receive a frame they will be forwarding that so these are all in the designated switches so that they are set in such a way that they will be forwarding the information to each other so if you see here clearly that in our network the priority of all switches has been left as a default and default is the 32768 here so the switch with the lowest mac address will be selected as a root bridge here so the uh, considering the mac address as well as the root bridge priority will be selecting as a root bridge here to verify this we use the following syntax show spanning tree vlan so for switch a we are using the syntax show spanning tree vlan 5 so we get vlan 0005 spanning tree is enabled on protocol i triple e and root id and root and priority is 32773 that is 768 after we get 773 which is nearby the 768 so it is chosen as a uh, root id root bridge and the root id is given and the mac address is given clearly here and this is the rest of the information again forward delay is also given here clearly is 15 seconds here so coming to the output again if you notice the fourth line there so it states that this is a root bridge and given as a root priority or the root id there so at this stage we should not worry about what is number 5 used in that command but we should consider that the root bridge is given a root id and it is very clearly mentioned about the mac address so now if we want to switch we wanted to switch that spanning tree or the root bridge to switch c and then what we use the following command to change from switch a to switch c as a root bridge so you use this spanning tree vlan 5 priority as 8192 which is the priority of switch c here then automatically it will change the root bridge from switch a to switch c here you see this following output here the root id is automatically changed to 8197 that means the root bridge switch is changed back to switch c here so if we if we see about the next step what we use is electing the root ports so how we elect the root ports here for non root bridges there will be only one root port so the root port will be at the port that the lowest path cost that means the lowest path cost which port is available that port is taken as the root port the root port is also is set to in the forwarding state that means the port also is set to forwarding state so whatever frame is received on the port will be forwarded to the next port or port switching here the path cost is the cost of transporting the frame to the root bridge that means 
the root port has a path cost. So, the path cost should be very low. So, that the, the importance of the path cost is the cost of transmitting a frame to the root bridge port here. So, the value is set according to the bandwidth of the link. So, the based on the bandwidth of the link, the value is placed accordingly. So, you, again you can see about the designated port allocating the third step here to get the STP convergence that if a switch has a redundant port connecting to it, then the LAN segment that means another downstream switch or hub connected to the LAN segment, then the port with the lowest cost is elected as a designated port here. So, the designated port is elected in such a way that uh, if a switch has a redundant port connecting to it in a LAN segment, when you consider another downstream switch or a hub for an example, then the port with the lowest cost will be elected as a designated port. So, what are the designated port functions? The designated port forwards BD, BDPUs into LAN segment and traffic to the form the LAN segment. That means, it will send the BDPUs into the LAN segment to form the traffic to, 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 to divert the traffic here. So, in simple terms, the designated port becomes only linked to the LAN segment and the towards rest of the network and the root bridge. That means, it will have the traffic flow between the LAN segment and the root bridge very clearly. So, this is the designated port functions about and this is how after following the three steps the STP convergence is formed.